Okay, so Cody, I um, wondered if you can take us back kind of way to the beginning and tell us how you got started in dance. I got started in dance uh, through Hemfield High School. Um, I always tell people that if I never would have went to Hemfield, I probably never would have found dance or theater. Um, growing up, I liked to do like plays in my basement. <laughs> I always did that, uh, and especially on snow days. We would put on the Disney records, and I would cast all the my neighbors and my sisters, and we'd all do plays in the basement. Did some church plays, but it wasn't until Hemfield that I really was like, wow, I really like this, and I owe it all to Pat Cowder. She really inspired me, um, made me realize that this is what I wanted to do, and helped me to do it. So you were in the dance theater program yourself. I was. I started Hemfield Dance Theater and uh, the spring musicals at Hemfield uh, my freshman year, uh, still in the Hackman Auditorium back then. Uh, then um, I was fortunate enough to be within the classes that uh, opened the new auditorium. I've been there ever since. Yeah. Ever since I graduated, uh, Pat had me come back and choreograph, and then I was an assistant director with Kristen Ponce, uh, and then uh, I got the opportunity to take over the program and I really did it because I wanted kids to have the same opportunities that I had when I was in high school yeah. and it's been a very, um, that program means a lot to me because it made me into who I am and I love being able to give back and to let other kids have those same experiences. Yeah, how many years, it's been going for like forever, how many this years? Coming year, this going? coming year will be the 35th anniversary of dance theater. Yeah, that's yeah. well, great that you have a part in keeping that going for so long, yeah. such a tradition there. Um, you went to college though, right, for, was it PR? Or I went to school for advertising. I went to Penn State yeah. uh, my freshman year at main campus for uh, advertising public relations with the focus on advertising. Uh, when I graduated college, I uh, worked briefly for the Fly magazine uh, and then decided I was gonna to move to New York. I had a, a friend who was graduating and was like, hey, I'm gonna do this, do you wanna do it with me? And I yeah. said, why not? Quit my job, was living with my parents anyway. Yeah. But the good thing that I, about going to school and getting a degree, even though I haven't really used it, is that that first year, I got to save some money, which was good because then when I got to New York, I never had to do that hand to mouth. Yeah. Um, worrying about when the next paycheck is going to come. So that uh, allowed me to audition more um, and allowed me to take more classes and stuff like that. And I think that's important because it's never fun to live hand to mouth. Yeah. No. <laughs> so what was it like when you first went to New York? Um, I got really lucky. I moved to New York in August. It was so hot and uh, moved everything in and uh, was, whew, two o'clock in the morning and I was still setting up my room and I said to my roommate Jessica, I said, I'm going to the Radio City audition tomorrow. I'm going. She's like, what? We have so much to put together. We, we have no time. And I was like, I didn't really even know how to get there on the subway. I just knew where the subway was and I was going to figure it out. And I ended up going to the audition. I got up at seven in the morning, went to the audition, was at 10 a.m. I came home in 2.30 in the afternoon and I said, I think I booked it. She was like, come on. Yeah. And, uh, here I did. I booked the Radio City Christmas Spectacular on my first day I moved to New York and then the rest was kind of history. I did the tour for one year and then um, I've been now this coming season will be my 16th in New York City oh my gosh. doing the show. So you live here but then every what, winter you just travel back? Yeah there. so I live here in Lancaster nine months out of the year and I travel back for three okay. to New York. So when you're back in Lancaster for those nine months what do you do when you're here? Uh, it's been pretty busy. I've been, uh, once I get back, my, my year pretty much starts in October. October starts Radio City I, from October to January, for October 1 to January 1, generally. And then I come back and I go right into dance theater and the musical. I literally get home. The next day I will start rehearsal for the musical. Um, and have, Hemfield? At Hempfield. At Hempfield. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do the... Uh, the dance theater program, I'll have auditions that first week of January and then get into that because dance theater is different because it's a it's an original show every year. The musical has a script and a score yeah. and you teach the kids the music, the lines are there. Dance theater it takes a little bit more time because you're writing it each year for the students and for who you have. Um, so I start planning dance theater while I'm at Radio City and then I come home and get right into it. 
Then May comes, all of a sudden it's May, and I've done the musical and dance theater, and I've been fortunate enough uh, since I moved back here that the Fulton has hired me, and I've done um, a bunch of shows at the Fulton Opera House, and that's been uh, really great. This past summer, I got to do, last summer, I got to do Newsies, which was a show that I was obsessed with the movie when it came out when I was like 12, and I, I really always wanted to do that show and I thought I missed the boat and the fact that they did the Fulton and cast me in the show was a, like a dream come true. Yeah, what was your role in that show? In Newsies I was Elmer, okay. one of the principal Newsies and it was, and then we traveled to Maine and took the show to Maine last summer so that was great. So that was last year, did dance theater the next day, started Newsies, took Newsies all the way to the end of the summer and then had three weeks off and then back to Radio City. So. Wow. <laughs> you can make yourself pretty busy, and now this summer, I'm taking a break. I'm taking three months, um, not doing a show, and just going to be teaching a little bit and trying to refuel and get ready for next year. Even not just looking, I mean, just when you search for you online and, and looking through Facebook, I feel like you've done so many things <laughs> in this area, though. Um, I'm Lancaster <laughs> proud. I am yes. hometown <laughs> Lancaster proud. Yeah. I love what has been going on downtown Lancaster, the resurgence, all the art. People ask me in New York, where are you from? I say Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Do you like living there? I said, oh no, it's the best. Lancaster is an amazing place to live. I'm so proud that I'm from here and I'm just so happy that the community also embraces what I do and supports me as much as they do. Yeah. And you've done a lot of stuff at EPAC also? I have. I, uh, that's where I um, started choreographing and directing right out of high school through Pat and through Edward Fernandez. Um, they kind of took me under their wing and they kind of taught me how to direct and how to choreograph better. I mean, it's a process. It's not something you learn how to dance and that's a skill set that you learn. And then directing and choreographing, not all dancers can choreograph and not all choreographers are great dancers. It's, it's another learned skill set, and you find that you either like it or you don't like it, or you, for me, it takes, took a long time since I started young to find a voice, to find what I wanted to say, what my style was, how I work, and um, so uh, that's another great thing about Lancaster is that there are places like the Effort of Performing Arts Center where com it's a community theater and people can go and learn and hone their crafts there's been a lot of people that come out and uh, from EPAC and have gone professional. Do you have a particular favorite thing to do? I mean, you said you, you direct and choreograph and you dance. Do you have, is anything your favorite to do out of those or do you just kind of like mixing favorite? it up? <laughs> um, I do like mixing it up. There are certain things that I really, I still love to perform, even though I'm going to be 40 coming up in April and uh, it's, performing seems to be uh, something I can still do, but something that doesn't, especially dance, doesn't come as easily uh, when you get older. I mean, I, I tell people I can still do everything I could do in my 20s. It just doesn't feel the same. It just doesn't feel the same. Um, but I, what I do, I have found great joy in directing high school students. And I don't know if it's because of their energy. Yeah, it is. It's because of their energy and the fact that they are, if you can inspire a high school student, they'll try anything. They're like, all right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I can do it. And that's really inspiring because the people that are non-dancers, people that are just athletic and physical and just want to try something, that's inspiring. And if you can get them to do it and then they're like, yes, they get so excited. And that is inspiring, uh, teaching high school kids dance and really getting them inspired about the arts is probably why Pat Cowder did it for so long and I realize why it is so exciting and fulfilling. Well, talking about inspiring people and, and Pat, um, I know you have you know, a special relationship with her, so um, can you kind of talk to me a little bit about that and people who have inspired you in your career? Well, first and foremost, Pat Cowder is my biggest inspiration in what I do. I think about her daily in my in my day-to-day -day routines of even at Radio City, I think about her a lot and and uh and even when I'm performing and when I'm directing and choreographing, I think about her a lot. 
Um, I can't say enough about how much she inspired me as a high school student, and and that that's very special because not every not all teachers are like that. You know, you find one and you're like, wow, that really. And the fact that she has be, stayed my friend and mentor for all these years is a testament to us, the arts, and yeah, just finding a commonality that, that, that lasts. Was there ever a moment where you realized, because you hear so many people say like the arts, it's so hard to make a living. Was there ever a moment where you were like, I can actually do this for a living? Saying that the struggling artist is uh, a hard lifestyle, I don't know, maybe it's because I had a supportive fam, I have a supportive family um, and a supportive community and a great group of friends, but I never felt like I struggled. And I thought that was always an old wives tale. Yeah. Like, I think, and this is what I teach, this is kind of one of my mantras at the high school, even though you may not go into the arts, hard work and dedication are gonna get you far no matter what you choose to do. And whether it's dance or theater or engineering or being a doctor, hard work and dedication are the same across all boundaries. And that's kind of my mantra. It's always I'm gonna work hard and I'm gonna do my best. Because if I do my best, no one can steal my joy. And if you do your best, you can't feel guilty about anything you did because you gave it your all. And there may be, there's always gonna be someone that can do it better. Yeah. There's always someone that's going to direct better than me or choreograph better than me or dance better than me. But as long as I put my best foot forward and do my best, I'm going to succeed and I'm not going to feel guilty about that. And with that mantra, I've been able to do this for a living and I haven't really had to worry about it. Yes, I've done odd jobs. Yes, I've, you know, but I ha I've never waited a table. And I think that it is, I think that whole adage scares people away from the arts, but I don't think it has to, yeah. because I think that it is kind of an old wives' tale, and the more, the more people work hard and just uh, focus on honing your craft, I don't see how you can't succeed in some way or another. And there's always a place in the arts for someone with passion. It may not be in front of the camera or on, on the stage in front of the audience, but there are places within the arts for all people that have passion towards the arts. What would you say to like your, your high school students or even younger? Um, you know, my daughter loves to dance. So what would you say to someone like her that, lo you know, right now she says, I want to be a dancer when I grow up. <laughs> what would you tell her to do so I that mean, she could have a life like yours? <laughs> I, I didn't go to school for dance, and I don't think that you need to. I think that the new, pro the new musical theater programs and dance programs, at, uh, you know, within the last 20 years, in colleges are really good programs and that you can learn a lot from getting a degree in musical theater or theater or dance. Um, but I don't think it's necessary in our business. I, there's too many examples of people that have succeeded in other, without having a college education in it. But what I say to kids is if, if you want to dance, if dance is what you want to do, then go try it. If you can see yourself doing anything else, if you say, oh, I love to dance, but you know, I, rather be, I, I really want to be a veterinarian yeah. too, then to that I say, go be a veterinarian. <laughs> because to succeed in the arts, you really have to put 100% of your passion into it. Because it is, look, you're selling yourself. You are your brand. You are your art. You are your... Um, what you put on the stage is all you. And it takes a lot out of you and there's critics and there's things and it, it will be, it will, it is taxing. But if you can't see yourself doing anything else but the arts, then you have to go try, you have to go do it. And if it works out, great. And if it doesn't, you know, you find another path. Um, when I retire, I don't know what I'm gonna do next. Um, people are like, what are you gonna do when you stop dancing? I don't know, but I'll do something <laughs> and I will, and I'll put the same passion and hard work and dedication to that and hopefully that I'll succeed in my next uh, path in life. But that's what I tell kids. If the if, if only thing you think about doing is performing, then you have to go try. What was it for you about dance? 
specifically when you were younger? What do you think it was that made you love it so much? I like about dance that made me, I know, it was that it was hard. For the first time, I found something that looked so effortless but was really challenging and hard for me. And I liked that it was hard. And I liked that not everyone could do it. And that's why I fell in love with dance. I was like, wow, I found something I'm good at that not everyone else can do. And I like it. Yeah. And it looks easy, but it's not. So you think you're going to do this basically for as long as you can? I'm not sure yet. I'm really not sure. I got, I got next year planned in, in, in how I found that I keep myself very calm is that I don't, um, I don't look too far into the future. I plan my year, and then the, somewhere in the middle of that year, things start to line up, and you say yes to things. You have to say no to some other things, and you line it up, and then, then you got your next year planned. And then, so I try not to look too far in the future, because when you do that, I feel a little anxious. You yeah. get a little bit anxiety. But. At this point, is it more people coming to you to do things, or do you still have to go out and kind of it's try to find things? It's a mix. Some things, sometimes I'll get a call and get invited to do something. I got invited to uh, work with Mark Robin from the Fulton on Guys and Dolls this winter, which was an amazing opportunity to work with him as a, his choreographer to his, him directing the show. Um, but then Newsies last summer, I auditioned for. I wanted it. Yeah. And I didn't even know if he'd have me because, you know, I'm, I was 38 at the time. <laughs> and I was like, will he even have me as a Newsie yeah. at 38? So I went in and I auditioned and I had to go to a callback and I made that on, one on my own merit. But yeah. so it, at this time... It must feel good though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it is... Um, it's fun. It's, I'm still having fun. And when I don't... When I'm not having fun anymore that's when I know it'll be time for a new path.